And in today's Carbo Space program, we're going to be continuing our exploration of Lagrange points using Principia mod. So this is a mod that I've recently found that allows you to create a multi-body gravity in Carbo Space program. So usually what happens is you have a, a single body that it creates a sphere of influence that basically makes your ship's orbit. But with this mod, uh, what you do get is um, a gravitational forces acting from all of the bodies in the Kerbal Space Program. And here it, it creates some really complex, interesting simulations. And we're going to be exploring uh, Lagrange points. Uh, specifically here, we're going to... Well, here's a picture of uh, what you will get to see. We're going to be putting... Um, a telescope, a Krubble telescope at L1 point between uh, Kerbin and the Sun. And then we're going to take amazing photos like NASA. We're going to do this NASA style like NASA did in 2015. And to do this, we're going to be using this Krubble telescope and we'll be placing this uh, between the Sun and Kerbin. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so let me show you what to do if you want to place your own spaceship in Lagrange 1 point in Kerbal Space Program using Principia mod. So first step is place something in orbit around Kerbin and uh, I'm going to show you uh, what to do next. So this is my Krubble telescope that we've used in the previous video. Um, and uh, what we want to do is, well, first of all, we don't really need uh, this other stage anymore, but we're going to keep this just for now. And um, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be using... Okay, so it's going to be really difficult to do this with Principia Mod in, um, engaged, but um, you basically want to uh, possibly place your spaceship without the mod first and then re-enable the mod after it's already in orbit around Kerbin... Uh, or so about around Kerbal, the sun, uh, like I have right here. Uh, so without the mod, um, basically uh, blast your engines uh, until you escape the sphere of influence of Kerbin, but you're going to be blasting them so that you actually escape it in this direction. So not this direction, not this direction, in this direction. It's actually relatively easy to do if you're using um, the maneuver nods. Unfortunately, because I'm using the Principia mod, my maneuver nods are all uh, different. They're all kind of not what they should be. So if I actually try to use my maneuver nods, they don't really work as well anymore. If, and so I won't be able to show you how to use maneuver nods, but basically if you uh, blast your engines and your ship um, does this and then escapes and goes that way, you will be able to reach this point in orbit right here, which is actually what you want. Now, uh, if we use the formula that you see on the screen right now, we'll find that this distance between um, Kerbin and the um, Lagrange 1 point is something along the lines of 136 million meters. Uh, here's the exact number. Um, and uh, this particular distance is basically what you want to achieve to be uh, right between Kerbin um, and the Sun in, in L1 position. This is obviously where you also have the uh, orbit that I talked about previously where you can actually orbit the imaginary point. Now, you also want to have a very specific speed at this particular point, and you see my velocity is already set to that. And this speed is found uh, another formula that is basically the velocity is uh, 2 pi multiplied by the distance between this point and the Sun divided by um, the total period uh, in seconds of orbit of Kerbin. Now, it's a, pr a pretty complex formula, but basically the velocity you'll get is 9,191.5 meters per second. I'm pretty close to that. So uh, technically, in terms of actual um, distance and in terms of actual velocity, I am currently at uh, the L1 point. So let's actually switch to the spaceship right now and we'll look, actually try to see if it actually stays in this particular location uh, and also if we actually can take pictures of Kerbin that you see right there in the distance. So this is uh, similar to that NASA um, satellite, NASA probe, that basically has a very powerful telescope pointing at, at the Earth and taking photos of it um, every two hours. And it's actually kind of similar to what I tried to recreate here, where we can basically now take a picture of Earth and possibly even get that uh, passing of the moon in front of Kerbin. Let's see if we can actually do it. So let's open the lens guard and activate the camera and zoom in on 
Kerbin. Oh no, it's all glitchy, but the moon is kind of passing in front of Kerbin. I think it's glitchy because I'm using um, uh, Eve mode. I'm using the uh, Enhanced Visual Effects mod, and also I have a bunch of other uh, mods, including sc uh, Scatterer, that sort of creates uh, all these super cool effects, but because I'm using this from a distance, uh, it's really causing a lot of problems here. Um, so let's ignore the uh, glitches, pretend that it, they don't actually exist, and uh, let's observe the passage of the moon. So we're gonna accelerate time a little bit. And this is this is basically... Oh no, it's going the wrong way. No, the moon is actually leaving us. Ha <laughs> uh, The passage of the moon is going the other way. So now we have to wait six days for it to come back. And that's okay, we'll, we'll just wait. But basically, this is what I wanted to observe. I wanted to observe the passage of the moon in front of Earth, um, as we do on Earth as well. Uh, and if we actually accelerate this really fast, you'll notice that the glitches kind of disappear as well. So let's just wait and see, see what happens. And hopefully we'll actually stay in the same orbit, uh, or same Lagrange point, because we actually do want to be able to maintain that point. So we'll see, we'll actually test the Lagrange point at the same time. And um, But calculation-wise, this is actually the, uh, I believe this is the almost exact location where we should be. And so we're just want to wait for the moon passage again, which should occur in, on a day, what, 30, 39, maybe? 38, 39? Uh, after the launch, obviously. All right, let's see if this is actually what I was hoping for, the passage of the moon in front of Kerbin. And here comes the moon. Now, um, interestingly, I think I'm actually losing my altitude. And oh no, the moon is coming from the wrong side again. That's not good. Let's wait a little bit more. I totally miscalculated this again. Uh, so I'm going to wait for, I'm just going to observe the moon from here and watch for it uh, to reappear again, uh, because it's actually not six days at all. It's actually a lot faster than that. Uh, and uh, what I want to do is, uh, I want to see if I actually do have a stable orbit. And this is actually what you can kind of see if you are in this particular point, um, which I think I'm sort of losing. I can kind of tell that my spacecraft or my Hubble, my Krabble telescope is not actually staying in a stable position. As a matter of fact, I think I'm losing altitude. Uh, I, I was supposed to stay in the same altitude, but for some reason, I'm not really keeping it, meaning that either I miscalculated with my Lagrange point, or it's very possible that it is actually a lot more complex and a lot more unpredictable than I imagined. So here comes the moon uh, with its glitchy surface and the Kerbin with its glitchy surface as well. We're going to accelerate just a little bit more. And here's that passage I was waiting for. Yay, finally, we will get to see uh, the same kind of a picture that we got to see on Earth with the moon, except, of course, more glitchy. Uh, now, I'm not sure why this is happening, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. So essentially, this is what I wanted to, to do. I wanted to try to recreate um, this uh, sort of a moon and Earth uh, passage, and I also wanted to recreate the Lagrange point using Kerbal Space Program and using Principia Mod. And basically, this is where we are in relation to everything else. So uh, if I were to zoom out, you would notice that Oh no, I think I've accidentally broke my uh, map. There we go. Uh, so if we were to zoom out here, you would see that it's sort of in the right location. Unfortunately, the altitude has fallen a little bit. It's supposed to be 202, but it's 157 right now, and it's still falling down, uh, which means I may actually have to do the following. I may have to blast my engines away from the sun, which I'm going to do right now. So that I actually re-establish my altitude and uh, I'm going to wait for altitude to start increasing so that I can actually possibly get back to the same Lagrange point as before. Now, uh, with some really complex calculations, you may even be able to find this imaginary orbit called Le Cijou orbit. Uh, and Le Cijou orbits are actually some of the more complex calculations you can get in, uh, in astrophysics and orbital dynamics and so on uh, but uh, this is something that you can possibly challenge yourself and try to see if you can find this imaginary orbit um, around which you can orbit in uh, in l1 point okay so our altitude is increasing our speed is back to normal so let's actually just accelerate time and see if we can stay in the same sort of location which is technically the l1 point um of Kerbin. And as you can see, it's sort of there, maybe not as stable as I was hoping for, 
Uh, the velocity is decreasing, unfortunately, but we'll have to reestablish that in a few seconds. But basically, yeah, there you go. So this is how you can get Lagrange points in a Kerbal Space Program and how you can try to place your spacecraft and your um, satellites in this particular location and then see if you can actually make this a perfect um, and stable Lossiju orbit where your craft basically kind of orbits around the imaginary point and never really leaves. And you can then use that for all kinds of research and all kinds of observations. And the distance from Kerbin to this point is about 1% of the distance of Kerbin to the Sun. And this is actually very similar to where the location of L1 point is on Earth as well. It's about 1.5 million uh, kilometers away, which is about 1% of the distance from this, uh, of the Sun from Earth. And just for fun, let's actually just run the simulation and see how badly we did here or if we can actually stay in this particular point for a longer period of time and uh, possibly crash our game. But anyway, so that's it for this particular video. As you can see, my game is slowing down dramatically and that's because um, this particular mod has a lot of calculations involved. Specifically, there's a lot of calculations in uh, with Joule. There's a lot of calculations. Um, where is Joule? Joule is here. Uh, with Joule's orbit and its, uh, its satellites, uh, there's a lot of calculations of different objects, including these... Um, uh, asteroids, all of which will be influencing everything in the game. So there's a lot of orbital and gravitational calculations that this mod does and this is why the game is a lot slower than before. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed this video and now you know how to uh, use Lagrange points and how to try to experiment with them in Kerbal Space Program because I think it's pretty fun, especially because this is a lot more realistic now and you can obviously um, create various experiments using all kinds of uh, cool orbital stuff that was not possible in the game before. And if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the other Kerbal Space Program videos I've posted before and also check out some of the other space videos as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe because I do have a lot of uh, space, a lot of science and math videos and I do have a lot of other cool stuff on my channel all the time. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like this and also share it with people that you think may like all kinds of space, math, science videos and want to learn through video games. And once again, thank you so much for watching, game you later, and see you in the next video, bye bye. And it looks like my spacecraft is slowly moving away from its uh, stable, or somewhat stable orbit, and uh, somewhat stable L1 point, and uh, is acquiring its own orbit around the sun. And that's okay, you know what, for this particular video, we're done with it, it's going to uh, get into its own orbit, and possibly even re-enter orbit of Kerbin. And what we can do is observe all of this through our beautiful telescope and until the game crashes or we just escape into the outer universe. Thank you so much, I'll see you guys later and bye bye. Let's accelerate time and observe this beautiful passage of Moon and Kerbin.